everyone, welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in. First off, I want to thank everyone for the great response I received from the bass drum techniques video. And since then, I've received a request to do a hand technique video. So, let's get started. All right, so see, I'm just letting my hand hang at my side. So if I just kind of sneak the drumstick in, let it roll down to the first joint, notice this is how my hand looks whether I've got a drumstick in it or not. So it's a very, very relaxed position. Okay, so from here what I want to do is find the balance point. Because if I hold the stick where I'm holding it right now and just let it fall, notice I'm keeping the fingers on the stick, I got a lot of rebound. If I hold it just like this and I'm too far back, it kind of dies out. It doesn't bounce very much. And if I'm too far forward, just the weight of the back part of the stick is heavier, so the tip doesn't even want to come down. So these, I have to say in all honesty, are the best drumsticks I've ever played. They're the Mike Johnston 2451 Maple Sticks. And on this particular stick, the balance point for me is if my thumb is covering the M of the word maple. If I just let it fall, that's where the balance point is. So let's pretend for a moment that, that we don't know that I'm going to be tapping the stick up and down right here. Watch what happens back in this area here. See how it's bouncing forward and back against the palm, okay? So what happens is if I, holding the stick and I just bend the wrist forward, see how the fingers kind of come out, and then as I pull backwards, the fingers come back, right? So I'm not going like that. So the idea is if I bend the wrist and every time I lower the wrist enough to hit the, the drum or the pad in this case, the drum head acts like a guy doing that, okay? See that? So it's completely bouncing rather than that and pushing and pulling, you know, or that. That's also got tension. So here, just really, really relaxed. Okay, so when I'm playing at these slower speeds, notice I've got the wrist bouncing up and down. The butt end of the stick is rebounding against the palm on the way up. So what's going to happen as I speed up, the motion is going to change very slightly. And for me, this happens right at about 144. So what's going to happen, and I'll demonstrate this in a bit to a metronome, as I'm speeding up, right about there, see it was very subtle move, the butt end is not bouncing against the palm anymore. Okay, so I'm still moving the wrist, but my back three fingers are helping to move the stick just a little bit. Okay? And then, as I speed up even more, what's going to happen is, right around 176 or 184, I'll be doing next to no wrist at all, and right about there. So the back three fingers, and from this speed on up, all right, so that was all fingers at that speed. Here are a couple exercises that we can do to develop our understanding of finger control. I'm going to hold it between the thumb and the index finger at the balance point. And then for now, with my right hand, I'm going to bounce the stick upward. Okay, so what this is doing is it's mimicking what my left hand is going to be doing. So here it is with the left hand now. I'm just doing the same upward motion. What's cool about this exercise is we don't need any equipment other than our drumsticks, so you can do this anywhere you want. I'm going to do the exact same motion, but I'm just going to choke way up on the drumstick and just pull up with the back three fingers. It's the same idea that we did a minute ago on the pad, and you can do both hands. So up to this point, um, I've been playing without a metronome, and this is a really good way to learn a technique. Is just take your time and don't worry about the timing. Just understand how bounce works, balance points, fingers, wrist, all that good stuff. Okay, but once you get that, then it's really important to play to a metronome. Okay, so then obviously we want to do the exact same thing, you know, with the opposite hand. And then once you've got that down, the next step is to put them together. So again, starting slow without your metronome. 
And the idea is you want the hands to be mirror images of each other, assuming you're playing match grip. Okay, and then again, once you get comfortable with how all this works, put on your metronome and just gradually work your way up in speed. So the next step is dynamics. We've been talking about playing extremely light. All right, so to create an emotional impact in music, we want the full range of volume. Okay, because if it's just whispering all the time, that just conveys one emotion. And same thing if we're just yelling, playing as loud as we can. So to create that, um, the more open strokes, a really good way to get started is again this rebound. If I just kind of fall forward, I'm not going to follow this up. See how the stick bounced up? I didn't pull the stick up. So basically what I'm doing again is I'm just, looks funny, but I just fall forward like that and stick just bounces up. Okay, so then the idea, at this point I'm not hitting hard. I'm just letting it do its thing. What's going to happen is as it's bouncing up, I just want to get behind the stick, follow the momentum. And same advice, do it with the right hand, just let it come up, and get behind the bounce. And then back and forth. Again, I'm not hitting hard at this point, it's louder because it's coming up higher. Okay, but from there we can learn to, to really snap. So one more thing before we get into multiple bounce strokes is I'm not always going to be playing open strokes where they come all the way back like this. Because if I want to play, for example, rim shots followed by ghost notes, if my stick is way up here, when I drop back down, that note's going to be too loud. So what will happen here, if I'm holding the stick really loose and just kind of bend the wrist up kind of quickly, see how the butt end comes out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull with the back three fingers like that, but also snap the wrist down at the same time. And what's really important, when it hits the drum, it's not against the palm when it actually makes contact. Otherwise, I'm absorbing all the shock and you can really get injured. So what's happening in slow motion, when it actually hits, the fingers are out, it wants to come up, I pull it against the hand, and then release. That release is super important because otherwise we're holding on to that tension. Let's try to do it slow. There's up and then release. Up. Release. Okay, so by ending low, then if I want to play a groove and throw in ghost notes, it's snapping down and it's ready for that next note. 